Yeah, very much so, actually, because this is something, again, that microburners get in a complete muddle about, right? The vast majority of CRMs that you are going to be using, and indeed email marketing platforms, host in America, either completely or as part of a global hosting network of, of data centres. From an EU point of view, and the current UK one, which again will change with this consultation, this is a problem because the federal system of law in America means there is no American data privacy law. There's California law, there's you know, Kentucky law, whatever, and none of it is regarded by the EU as providing adequate data privacy. So what this means is that if you are collecting what's called special category data, things like health, sexual orientation, political belief, religion, that sort of thing, or high risk data, which could be financial information, children's data is pretty high risk in these weird and unpleasant times, you know, that you, you really have to have it encrypted end to end so that the American government can't get in and find out who all your gay clients are or who your Muslim clients are or anything like that. Quite understandable, I think. You know, we, we didn't get into marketing to shop our clients to Big Brother, did we? The EU feels quite strongly about that. So you have to make a real distinction about what type of information you're collecting. And there's a concept called data minimization, which is not to collect all that unless you really need it, which makes life a lot easier. But assuming you're even collecting ordinary level personal data, the big tips in this, we all love a bit of this, don't we? How many customer phone numbers have you got on yours? Can you access your emails from here? Now, I don't know about you, but we all have a little drink from time to time. Don't we? we used to before lockdown. Do you remember them days you could go out for a drink with other people? Um, how many times have you accidentally left your phone, even for 10 minutes, popped off to the loo without it, or worse, still left it and had to spend the next three days finding it? You could have 10,000, a million customer records accessible from this device. Is it encrypted? And an awful lot of people's phones are not encrypted. Now, the good news is if you've got an Apple device and you've put your PIN number thing on it, Apple encrypts when you set your PIN. If you're not using an Apple device, which is about 60% of people using smartphones, it doesn't do that. You have to positively go encrypt your phone. Why does that matter? Because passwords can be hacked really easily but if you think that that data privacy data security is just about having a password you missed the last 20 years honest it really isn't so you need to encrypt that stuff big big thing in the modern age of apps and smartphones we forget big hole and the other thing of course this or your ipad or your laptop did you let your husband use it or your girlfriend use it or your kids use it did you give them your log on to do it Always, I mean, I wouldn't share a device that had my husband has no access to this device, this device, or that one. Bless, he's got his own. He's not been his bar for going all that. Because this is business data. He has no business being on that device. Why do you not share devices? We're doing an event about that. We do. One in October, by the way, we're going to have a live hack from an ethical hacker who's going to nick passwords. And we're going to have a November one from our um, uh, IT person we work with talking about how device sharing is a security risk. So if you don't believe me, go to those events, but they are. Because when you're letting your kids log on to maybe a gaming site, which could have some dodgy code in the back, it's your hard drive with your client data on this getting infected. So really, really secure the devices that have got so commonplace that you've forgotten will be my big tip. And do not share logons.